Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. And today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of wonderful Isla single malt whiskeys coming to us from the Brook Lottie Distillery. Now, Brook Lottie has recently been streamlining their portfolio, so we're not seeing as many bottlings from them as we used to see on the shelves. But these two lines have survived, and I'm very, very thankful for that. The Port Charlotte line, this is the Port Charlotte Isla Barley, is a heavily peated Isla single malt whiskey that they release. Now, when I say heavily peated, we're talking 40 ppm. That is a phenol level that's on par with what Laphroaig and Ardbeg typically produce, okay? So that should give you an idea. Bottled at 100 proof, retailing roughly around $70 to $100, somewhere in there. All right. Other thing to note about this one, the whole Isla Barley designator, the reason it's there is because Jim McEwen, when he was creating this whiskey, he wanted to kind of show you, let me show you the can, by the way, little nice little white can to go with it, that he says right here, we believe terroir matters. So what he did was he sourced the barley for this whiskey from six specific farms there on Isla. Then he had that grain uh, smoked and peated to a phenol level of again 40 ppm. So he was trying to show you that locally sourced grain distilled and matured locally what it would be like and how the different soils would uh, maybe affect the grain and affect the flavor profile. And it's kind of similar what the wine industry has been telling us for many, many years, how one vineyard next to another vineyard doesn't necessarily mean the grapes and the wine are going to taste similar that from even row to row, the different soil compounds are going to affect the vines differently. Well, same thing for grain, same thing for barley here. Okay, so that's what he's doing here. Six farms, bottled at 100 proof, okay? Now, for the Optimore 6.3, this is the uh, Isla Barley version as well. Similar concept, except instead of going to six farms, he went to one farm, the Optimore farm, to get the barley for this one. To whereas this was peated to 40 ppm, this one's to 258 ppm. That is the most heavily peated whiskey ever created. All right, comes in a nice little white can as well. So don't get this confused because if you go to the store and you see the Optimore 6.1, it's in a black bottle in a black tube. It's not the same stuff, okay? This is the Isla Barley version of Optimore 6.3. Now, quick keynote on this one. There are some things, and I have seen and read, where some people don't like this whiskey. And I can understand it to an extent. But the thing is, you have to know how to work this whiskey. This whiskey takes a little bit of uh, uh, creativity with to get it spot on. And what I mean by that is, and here's a little liquor hound tip for you on the Optimore 6.3. What you have to do to this bottle is you have to let it oxidize. If you don't let this bottle oxidize and you just start drinking from it as soon as you crack it, it's not going to be at its best, okay? Because when you first crack this bottle, you're going to find that it's very, very big, but very spicy. There's some good spice, because it's 128 proof, by the way. 100 proof, 128 proof. So it comes off very, very spicy initially. So what I recommend you do, and I actually have, always have a, two bottles going. I have one that I'm... Uh, maybe pouring from and one that's already open and oxidizing in the back because I know through whiskey friends and everything We really love this bottle. So you just have to have one ready to go kind of thing But what I do is I pour from it and I get it past this little uh, skinny neck to where there's good oxygen to whiskey contact and What that's going to do is let it sit there for about a month or two. I know it's hard You know, it's a great whiskey to have to sit and wait a month But what happens is magic in this bottle because it starts to oxidize, it really starts to soften. It starts to, uh, that spice level drops and you start getting this really sweet farminess to it and it becomes amazing whiskey. The other thing to note on this one is, and I know you're going to be tempted to do it, it's 128 proof, you're going to be like, I need to add water to it. Don't do it on this one, okay? Because it really does not like water, especially if you're just going to dump a teaspoon in there or a tablespoon or whatever you want to do. It just really aggravates this whiskey right out of the glass. So unless you have like 30 minutes to an hour to wait, uh, I don't recommend adding water. Now, if you want to do maybe a drop or two, you're still going to have to wait like 15, 20 minutes for it to calm down. But once it does, it'll probably be, you know, back on par with where about it should be. But to me, it doesn't need it. Straight out of the glass, that's where you need to be on the Optimore 6.3. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and get to the actual nosing and tasting. 
Port Charlotte, Isla Barley, on the nose. Oh. Really, really fruity right up front. And when I say fruity on this guy, I'm talking more like stone fruit. So I'm thinking dried apricots, peaches. There's also a, a very uh, sweet hay element underneath. Cinnamon, some spices. Good amount of, uh, there's some brininess to it on the nose, but it kind of feels part of the smoke. And the smoke, surprisingly, isn't just overwhelming. It's actually kind of in there, but it's melded in there just about perfectly. Really nicely balanced smoke. The smoke feels, uh, smells sweet. It smells kind of full of smoked meats or smoked fish in here as well. Now remember, when you're nosing whiskey, make sure you always keep your mouth cracked. You know, you're kind of breathing through your nose and your mouth as well. And, and smell, you know, kind of nose from different levels away from the glass. Because I started noticing there's almost a grape or a pomus type of aspect to the nose on this one. So when you uh, take grapes and you, after you've done the wine process where you've crush the grapes and you're just left with maybe some stems and skins they usually take that and they will distill that into like let's say grappa okay well that kind of that's called pomace and that's kind of what I get right here on the nose on this one really really nice perfectly balanced whiskey all right let's go ahead and taste it we're going to finish the uh, Port Charlotte Isla Barley here Good medium viscosity, very, very nice. Really nicely sweet. Um, not overly sweet, but a good su sweeter style of a whiskey. Apricots. Wow, the smoke kind of comes in right here on the mid palate. Cinnamon kind of um, uh, just kind of blooms right there at the mid palate. And then the smoke just starts wafting in, and it's, it is smoked meats, it's smoked pork, um, some smoked fish, brininess on that back end. There's also a, um, maybe a sweet grass element or a little bit of a damp hay element to it as well. Maybe an oyster mushroom, but it's very, very light. It's underneath all those fruits and sweet smokes and pork and, and all that smoked fish. Underneath, there's that sweet, maybe damp hay, oyster mushrooms. And maybe that's that terroir that what he was really trying to focus on. That's maybe what that's coming through right there on the palate. Very, very nicely done. It's a shame that uh, Jim McEwen retired, you know, but hey, wish him all the best. He did great stuff while he was there at Brooklady. I'm sure he's going to continue to help them along the way with probably some input. But this Octomore 6.3, if this was his swan song, man, he went out like a champ. Now let's go ahead and get to the nosing on this one. Oh my goodness. After it oxidizes, it's just peaches and cream. It's very, very... And it's almost fresh peaches. It's very sweet. Sweet cream on top of those peaches. Ugh. A good amount of almost farm, okay? And I know some people hear that and they think, oh, well, that's negative. Not, not in this case. Not in some great whiskey cases like Brora. Brora has a lot of farm to it. And this isn't to that level, but this doesn't cost what a Brora costs. You know, a Brora is at least $1,000 for a moderate Brora. If you want the great brewers, you're going to pay $3,000 now. And this is $170 to $200. But you get that aspect. You get that element. And let me tell you, it's almost just as big as brewer because it is massive. 258 ppm, 128 proof. To come off this, this sweet and this aromatic is amazing without just being overly smoked. The smoke is in here. Again, smoke, uh, very similar smoke, campfire smoke. Not sooty, not creosote. 
smoked meat, smoked pork, again, very similar, but maybe a little, a little, um, a little heavier on the smoked meat, a little heavier on the smoked fish on this one. All right, let's go ahead and get to the taste. Wow, what a whiskey. Five years old. We're talking, that's Kilhoman level. Kilhoman has been working with five-year-old whiskeys for a while, and they produce some really nice stuff, but this is on a whole nother level. This 6.3 is ridiculous. Just like it knows. Peaches, apricots, cream. Whoa, here comes that cinnamon. And this one isn't just blooming in the mid palate. This one is swelling. This one's getting... Oh, yeah, but then it just... Uh, right when you think it's going to get just really hot, it just kind of starts rolling over and you start getting into that smoke. Again, that smoke is very similar but bigger than this one. Not overly, uh, not heavy though. It doesn't feel just nasty and ashy. It's full of those smoked meats and, and a little of the smoked fish, the brine coming through. Now to whereas I was getting kind of an earthiness or some damp hay here, over here I, I get it as well, but it's it's a sweeter hay. It's a sweeter grass underneath. Still has some dampness. Wow, it's a really nice, I guess I could still say the oyster mushroom kind of aspect that was here is kind of here as well. But everything is richer, everything's bigger on this one. Uh, now the word is, supposedly, that maybe he used some wine barrels for the maturation process on this whiskey. I could kind of see that happening. Look at the color of it. It's it's pretty unique color. And if he did use some kind of white wine or a, a rosé, who knows what he used for this uh, maturation process. Bravo, because he did a great job in, in uh, incorporating the fruits in the smoke on this one. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have the $100 to $200 to spend on whiskeys, these are great ways to do it, especially considering, you know, uh, what's available out there now. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Everybody, please have a great evening and cheers.